on Facebook Live. Now it's going into the presentation. Can you see my screen? Um, yes, I can see your presentation, Rita. Yeah, go, go full, there you go. Thank you. Are we ready, Jesse? You're, you're on mute. Are we good to go? Awesome. All right. Muy buenas tardes a todos. We want to welcome you to our first ever virtual open house. My name is Rita Cardenas and I am the CTE Academy coordinator and your MC for the night. I would like to start off by thanking you for joining us this evening and also take a moment to thank all the veterans for their service, dedication and sacrifice. We are so excited to welcome you into our home and show you what Juarez has to offer. This evening, we will start with a virtual tour narrated by one of our assistant principals, Ms. Angel Roan. And this, on this tour, you will get a peek into our classrooms and communal spaces. If you were here, this tour would take a little over 20 minutes. Since it's virtual, we've been able to narrow it down to about seven. After the tour, I will tell you about our new teaching academy and our solar program. Then you will hear from members of our counseling team and our college and career coach. They will tell you about the various ways in which we support our students to ensure their post-secondary success. También escucharemos un mensaje de nuestro director, el señor Juan Carlos Ocon, y enseguida el señor Márquez, nuestro coordinador de admisiones, les dirá los pasos que deben tomar para llenar su, su solicitud para asistir a nuestra escuela. And lastly, we will have time to answer any questions that you may have. Ahora no hay que esperar más. I present to you our virtual tour narrated by Ms. Angel Rock. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone this evening. I am so excited that you have taken a few moments to join us as we go through a quick virtual tour of our campus. Um, please bear with us as we look through some of the beautiful images of our campus. Jesse, I'm playing. Yes. Wonderful. So we're beginning with an aerial view of our campus. And um, what we're going to do is show you a couple of images of um, places that students would frequently um, enter into if they were in the building. Of course, we, don't, we aren't allowing anyone in right now because we're safety first, but should you have any um, questions or concerns and you need to speak to an administrator at our school, um, myself or our principal or our other assistant principal, we're pretty much there every day. So, come visit us. These cap and gowns are things that we hope to see all of your eighth graders in as they graduate from our um, school in the next four years. Here we have the center of our campus, our patio, lunchroom. And the piece that I'm excited about um, in the video is to kind of highlight our new foosballs tables and our table tennis. Um, we were really wanting to make an investment in ensuring that our students have an opportunity to socialize more um, and really be connected to each other as well as our school campus. In the video, you will also see um, lots of imagery of artists who have um, left behind a lot of cultural work in our building. And the artists were, um, these images were crafted like in the 80s by some former Juarez grads. So always excited about the contributions of all of our students.
Again, this is an area you would see if you enter through door one of our school. Mm -hmm. Next up, we're highlighting our massive swim pool. It is huge in there in our gymnasium, <clears throat> which actually has two levels that includes a space for students to lift weights and use exercise equipment. Next up, we're going to highlight um, one of our career academies, more specifically our Medicina Academy. My hope is that you guys will apply to this particular academy. We're going to take a look into the classroom right now. I have a light sense of humor, guys, which is why I was talking to the cadaver. <laughs> All right. Also in our school, we have a um, clinic by Olivia. Um, we're also highlighting a couple of more of our academies, which you will hear Rita talk through in just a few moments. We're very proud of our health, uh, medical, culinary arts, solar, which will be new, teaching, which will be new. Look how gorgeous our classrooms are. Next up, we're gonna view our library. These are our founding mothers of Bonino Warriors Community Academy, the image you just saw a moment ago. Here in our massive library, which a lot of schools don't have a formal library at this time, we have a librarian and all, and we have adaptive seating for students so they can come and complete assignments or just find a place to kind of de-stress and unwind for the day. I'm such an actress, guys. Do so you see it, 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 exactly what I said came right up? <laughs> Next up, our halls. Um, and as you can see throughout our campus, we have um, seating so students can um, kind of converse with one another as they wait to go from one class to the next, which really does help students a lot. The next thing that I'm highlighting in our classroom here are our um, competencies because we're a competency-based education school. And throughout our building, all core subjects and non-core classes um, <clears throat> provide content related to um, these four specific competencies. Um, here I'm just highlighting um, those in our social studies classes or for our incoming ninth graders, this will be the civics class where they would go over knowing and understanding, investigating, communicating, and thinking critically because we know that we want all of our students to think critically so that they'll have more opportunities once they leave our building. And finally, um, in addition to our academic competencies, we are also have our developmental competencies because we would like to develop the whole child, right? And so these competencies um, just reinforce our messaging around caring for our students 
here and here and the head and the heart. So we want to make sure they have skills to be um, socially aware, to have relationship skills, to persevere, to have self-awareness, as well as self-management. Yes, perfect. So more images of the artistry in our building and all of these things, these images that you see were created by our students. And so we invite you guys to come on in, become an eagle so that you can contribute just as our former students have. And go Eagles! <laughs> Look at all of the beautiful images. Again, your premier neighborhood school. Thank you guys for your time. I'm gonna hand the mic over to Ms. Cardenas and we will talk a little bit more about what we have to offer. I hope to see you eighth grader soon. Thank you, Ms. Rowan, for your narration. We apologize for the buffering. Um, you know what, sometimes things happen where we just have to roll with it and, and that's what we do best. So. Um, it is definitely bittersweet to see our spaces without our students. Eagles, if any of you are watching, we want you to know that we miss you very much and these halls are just not the same without you. Now I would like to talk to you about our new teaching academy and our solar program. But first I wanna make sure that you are aware of all the CTE programs that we offer. We have five CTE programs that you can apply to architecture, culinary arts, gaming and web development, medical and healthcare careers, and new this year, our teaching academy. This year, eighth grade students can apply to our teaching academy. This academy serves as a pipeline for those who seek to become educators, because we know how important it is to have educators of color serve students of color. We are even more excited to offer it. Starting your sophomore year, you will, you will start developing the skills needed to become an educator, all while earning dual credit and industry recognized certifications. Our Solar Academy is not one you can apply through uh, GoCPS, but you should know that students in our solar program have a direct pathway into a pre-apprenticeship with IBEW Local 134. Uh, to clarify, that is the Illinois Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Union. This partnership guarantees that our students will have, will learn all the skills needed to project themselves into a successful and lucrative career as a union member with the IBEW. At the end of the presentation, Mr. Marquez will dive into how to apply to these programs. Now I would like to present to you Mr. Ubaldo Lopez and Mr. Jesse Palencia. All right, so thank you again for joining us. Um, I'm gonna be presenting quickly on a little bit of what the counselors do at Juarez. Um, and there you can see it. We have six actual counselors, uh, two or three, two college coaches and one extra support. That's why I have the third one, but we have a lot of support here for you guys. And we can go to the next slide. Um, and what we touch on are, here's what we do as, as uh, counselors. And you can see us there in action, a lot of, working with our students, but obviously the social emotional component, which hopefully you guys have as well in elementary school, post-secondary, right? Because now we're thinking of what you're gonna do after high school. And always, always focusing on academics while you're with us. Uh, here you can see, so some of the ideas that you can see on how we we uh, support our students, and you can read over these, but a lot of the key ones that I would suggest you start managing now would be like time management. That's always very helpful to get organized. Um, relationship skills is key, especially as teenagers and you're starting to get a little bit older. Hopefully you choose us at Juarez, but if you go to a different high school, always relationship skills is key. Um, and you can see some of the others that, that we help with. Obviously post-secondary is always one of the keys as well.
And then again, we have our interventions. So when you'll see us in the classroom, uh, we get to meet you through every grade level. Um, uh, anytime you guys want to set up meetings with us individually with counselors, we're always available as well as with parents. But these are some of the key areas that we get to uh, meet with you guys, but just keep us in mind. And again, there's six counselors for, for students. It's not just one counselor. Uh, keep us in mind. Thank you, counselors, for that information. You should know that Mr. Palencia is a former and proud Juarez Eagle. He is also a certified master counselor. Now I would like to introduce another former Eagle and master college and career coach, Ms. Yesenia Olvera. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Rita, for the introduction. Uh, buenas noches, everyone. Um, but yes, I am your master college and career coach. Next slide. Um, so, Camino a la Universidad, Road to Post-Secondary Success, that is my key role at Benito Juarez. So, Benito Juarez ultimately believes our students are all college eligible and Juarez has a post-secondary success team ready to support students with college applications, FAFSA completion and verification, scholarship support, and introduction to various post-secondary pathways. So we are extremely grateful that we have so many key players ready to support your students as soon as they graduate high school, have plans. Thank you, Ms. Olvera, for that information. Como pueden ver, estamos muy orgullosos de nuestra facultad que también se graduó de Juárez. Ahora me enorgullezco en presentarles a nuestro director, el señor Juan Carlos Socón. Buenas tardes a todos, padres y estudiantes. Mi nombre es Juan Carlos Socón, el director de la Escuela Comunitaria Benito Juárez. De parte de toda nuestra facultad de estudiantes y padres, les quiero dar la bienvenida a nuestra noche de información para padres y estudiantes de octavo grado. La Escuela Comunitaria Benito Juárez es más que una secundaria. Este campus se ha convertido en un hogar, su casa, donde nuestro enfoque es el desarrollo intelectual, social y emocional de los estudiantes, sus hijos. Los años en la secundaria son los años más importantes para sus hijos porque la secundaria debe preparar a sus hijos para la universidad, para su carrera y para participar en la vida como adultos. La Juárez es una escuela muy especial. Aquí nuestros estudiantes, sus hijos, son nuestra prioridad. Juárez ofrece programas académicos muy rigurosos más de 60 clubs y deportes. De la Juárez, los estudiantes se gradúan como líderes, preparados para la universidad y para ser miembros activos de la comunidad. Todo es posible en la Juárez. Los invito a explorar y descubrir todo lo que ofrece la Juárez. Los invito a que elijan a la Juárez como su secundaria. Muchas gracias y espero mirarlos muy pronto en nuestra orientación para nuevos estudiantes y familias. Hello everyone, parent and students, welcome to Benito Juarez Community Academy, home of the Eagles. My name is Juan Carlos Ocon and I am the principal. On behalf of all our staff, students and parents, I want to welcome you again to our virtual open house. Benito Juarez Community Academy is more than a school. This campus has become a home, your home, where our focus is the intellectual, social, and emotional development of the students, your children. The high school years are so important because these are the years that will prepare students for college, career, and for life as adults. Juarez is a special place because our students, your children, are our priority. Juarez offers rigorous academic programs, more than 60 clubs and sports and activities that prepare students to graduate as leaders who are ready for college, career, and life. Everything and anything is possible at Juarez. I invite you to explore and experience everything that Juarez has to offer. I invite you to select Juarez as your high school. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you at our orientation for new students and families. Thank you, and go Eagles! 
Thank you, Mr. Ocon, for your words. Last, but certainly not least, is Mr. Santiago Marquez, our admissions coordinator, who will share with you the steps to take to ensure your place as future Eagles. So welcome everybody. My name is Santiago Marquez. I'm the admissions coordinator and a member of the senior leadership team. As you had an opportunity to see today, Juarez has become one of the best neighborhood schools in the city. And uh, we've been accomplishing this by offering great facilities and a wide range of academic programs. Uh, students can apply to five career programs or the IB program at our school. So I want to review really quickly the five career programs that are available for students to apply in Go CPS are the architecture program, the game programming and web design, um, the culinary arts program, uh, the medical and health careers program, and this year eighth graders have an opportunity to apply to a new program at Juarez, the teaching program. In addition, uh, students can apply to the IB program, which is a program geared for um, uh, preparation for college and um, it's accessible to all students. So um, how do you do this? Well, by now I'm hoping you're aware of GoCPS. If you haven't already set up your account, it's very important that you do it right away. Uh, so consult with your counselor. Uh, and once you've set up your account, you need to uh, apply by creating a list of the schools and programs you're interested in participating next year. Perhaps the most important thing of this list is organizing it in the order of uh, the, the schools that you're most interested. So for example, if any of the programs you um, heard about tonight are really interesting to you, you have to include that program in your list. And most importantly, you have to include it at the very top of your list and in your number one or number two spot. That way you are uh, ensuring that you'll get an offer from one of the Juarez programs. I wanna remind you, you have time until December 11th to complete your application. And for those of you that might have already submitted your application, I also want to remind you that you can change your mind and you can change the order in which you listed programs and schools all the way up until December 11th. Um, once you've completed your application, then the, you're, you're essentially going to have to wait until sometime in March where you're going to be notified um, of what school and program is extending you an offer. And we are really hoping that you put all of our programs toward the top of your list and that you'll get an offer from one of our programs so that you too can become a Juarez Eagle. Thank you, Mr. Marquez. And thank you all for joining us. We are so incredibly proud of our school, of our families, but most importantly of our students. We can't wait to meet you, class of 2025 Eagles. We hope that you all enjoyed tonight's presentation. This presentation was recorded and will be shared on our Facebook page, along with our tour video and other promotional materials that you can review at your own time. Now we will open it up for questions submitted via our Facebook page. Jesse, we are ready for you. Uh, yes, so those of you who are tuning in, uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, please comment. Um, I'll be reading those comments to uh, the people in this call. Uh, so feel free to uh, comment. I do know that there is a delay um, between the time. So just give us uh, a minute or two so we can catch up to the questions. Uh, padres, si tienen preguntas, por favor, uh, responden o comenten um, en el video uh, y leamos sus preguntas. So again, we'll give uh, participants a, a minute or two just because of the delay. So again, please comment if you have any questions.
I have a question. Is Ms. Olvera still with us? All right, so we do have a question already. Oh, so great. It looks that this is a prospective uh, eighth grader. Uh, Franco Cervantes uh, said, what link do we go to to apply for the high school? So maybe Mr. Marquez could go over it again. Yeah, so Franco, to apply to any of the programs you heard about tonight, you have to first go to GoCPS. And the, the, the web address is go.cps.edu. Uh, you can also find a link to GoCPS uh, through the Juarez website. Remember, GoCPS is the uh, district CPS application program. So you use it to apply to any high schools, any programs, including all of the programs that we have here at Juarez. So you have to go there, set up your account. And uh, once you set up your account, you'll be able to uh, quickly find our programs. And you want to include them, as I said before, toward the top of your list. That way, you, you increase your chances of getting an offer from one of our programs. I do have two, question, two more questions and one comment. Uh, other question is from Eileen. It says, if my sibling um, already goes to Minito Juarez, do I have a good chance to get accepted there too? Yes, it definitely helps to have a sibling. Um, the district in general, but especially Juarez, we try to keep families together. And if one uh, brother or sister is already having a great experience at our school, we welcome the sibling and it does increase your chances of uh, being accepted to one of our programs. All right, we got more questions. Uh, Jenna uh, asked about uh, the medical program. If you could speak more, give more of an explanation of a medical program. Sure. So um, all of our career programs are designed to share with high school students um, specific aspects of that career. In particular, in the medical and health career program, you're gonna learn, um, you're gonna learn the basics of anatomy, so the different uh, um, parts of the human body. You're gonna learn physiology, so how these parts work with one another. But in addition to that, you'll have an opportunity to begin to learn about what opportunities are there for you once you leave high school in the world of the medical and, um, and health careers. You'll have um, an opportunity to um, visit hospitals. Also, ho um, healthcare professionals will visit our school to talk to you as a student of this program. And overall, you'll learn also a lot about patient care. So you saw perhaps in the video, there was a, a shot of um, a, a dummy patient in uh, what looked like a hospital bed. Well, that is in our school, in one of our classrooms to help you understand how to take care of patients as well. All right, uh, the question from, and I, I can answer this one, Oscar Salgado said, do we have baseball and football? And the answer is yes, we offer uh, boys and girls basketball and we do have football. And then our uh, next question is from Gloria Moncada. It says, on GoCPS, I didn't see automobile. Uh, do you, how do you apply, apply sign for it? Yeah, was that Gloria? Uh, Gloria, good catch. Um, going forward, Juarez does no longer offer the program, the automotive technology program. Uh, it was a program that school offered for several years up until last. But going forward, it's not a, a program that you can apply for Juarez. So I'm going to invite you to review the other five career programs, including the newest uh, addition to our career programs, which is the teaching program. If I can add something to that, sorry, Jesse, before we move on to the next question. Um, Mr. Marquez, we spoke a little bit about our solar program and that it is um, a, a partnership with the IBEW that we are very proud of. And unfortunately, students can't necessarily apply to it through um, GoCPS. How can students become um, integrated into this program? Yes. Um, so in addition to uh, having the option to apply to any of the five career programs or the IB program, students have an option to join Juarez through the general education program. and. Um, I'll invite all of you to include even that program in your application. Once you become a Juarez Eagle during the first year at Juarez, you'll be exposed to uh, the solar program. 
And uh, during your first year in high school, you'll be given a chance to apply and join that program uh, during w w a program that will start during your second year, your sophomore year in high school. And this is also an opportunity I'll take to remind everybody the careers programs is, while you have to apply now during eighth grade, all of these career programs are three-year programs and they begin during your second year in high school. But you have to apply now. If you're interested in any of these programs, you must go back to GoCPS and include any of the Juarez programs toward the top of your list. It's the only way to sort of ensure that you'll receive an offer from our school, one of these programs. All right, next, next question is by Yolitzin uh, Ortega. Uh, can you touch more on the Horace LT JROTC program? P. Marquez, you're on mute if you're... Yeah. So, um, in addition to our academic programs, Juarez has had a, um, a long-standing tradition of the JROTC program. That's the Junior Reserve um, uh, Officer Corps Marine Program. So, um, that's an opportunity that all students have at Juarez. Once you join our school under either a career program or the IB program, or later in your second year, you join the solar program, you can also uh, join JROTC. JROTC at Juarez is given to you as an option between taking the traditional PE courses, the physical education courses, or if you're interested in exploring a little bit the culture of the Marines, what's their values and traditions, you can instead be part of the JROTC program. So, um, that's open to all students again, no matter of what academic program you uh, are part of. All right. Oh, you wanna add something? I do actually. In addition to um, what Mr. Marquez said about our JROTC program, um, this is a, a program for students who uh, maybe aren't necessarily interested in going to the Marines, but it's also a really great option to develop um, your leadership skills as well as civic engagement. Um, our JROTC students are a really big part of our um, educational community and they're always involved in all aspects of our school. Every time we have a school event, you will always see our JROTC students here supporting um, our students, our staff, and our parents. Uh, Santino Spangola uh, asks, uh, what are the GPA requirements? Santino, I'm thinking you're you're asking um, what are GPA requirements to apply to any of these programs, right? Um, well, if you go to your CPS account and you search for these programs, um, you'll be able to apply to all of them. If it's showing up on your end of Go CPS, then you can apply. All career programs have a minimum requirement of 2.5 GPA, which the majority, if not all eighth graders, um, uh, meet this minimum requirement. So don't worry about it. All of these programs we're discussing right now here are uh, available to you to apply. Our next question uh, from Gloria Moncada. Uh, she asked, how do you let Horace know if there's another sibling student to increase our chances for acceptance? Um, it's one of the questions in your um, setting up of your GoCPS account. And then uh, once that's uh, included in your account, then all high schools, including Juarez, are notified of the fact that you have a sibling in Juarez. And that, as we said before, uh, helps you out getting into the program that you're interested. Um, those are the uh, only questions I have. So again, we'll give like another minute uh, for um, the more the attendees to uh, type up any um, questions in the comments. Uh, si tienen preguntas, por favor, um, ponlas en los comentarios. Um, le vas a dar un minuto uh, para poner si tienen más preguntas. I have a quick question for Mr. Ocon. Mr. Ocon, can you tell us a little bit about um, how our parents are a part of our, our educational community? Can we talk a little bit about um, parent university and what opportunities are offered to them? Absolutely. Thank you for, for the question. So we have a program called Parent University, and 
uh, Parent University offers uh, different ways for parents to get involved in every facet of, the, of our school community. Uh, through Parent University, parents can take um, classes here um, for everything from Zumba um, to um, manualidades, arts and crafts, um, English, uh, and even computer classes, as well as um, a wide variety of uh, workshops for parents on how they can help um, their children at home. Um, there are so many ways for parents to get involved here as well through Parent University. Uh, those includes, include events like Café con el Director, Coffee with the Principal, um, as well as being part of our Parent Patrol. Parents can come in, volunteer to help us uh, with our lunchroom or on field trips, um, or to just be part of our school community. Uh, and if parents have ideas for workshops, uh, or if parents have a special skill that they would like to share with other parents, we are a family, we are a school community, and our doors are always open for parents to get involved because this is really a family and we work together to make sure that all of our students are successful. We have a parenting coordinator. Her name is Maria Ramirez, and she is a full-time parenting coordinator, also something that we are very proud of. And you can find her contact information on our website at benitojuarez.net. And she can also talk a lot more with you about all of the programs that Juarez offers under Parent University. Uh, we do have uh, two more questions. Uh, first question is, can you talk a little bit more about supports for students with an IEP? Sure. So um, last year, just to let you guys know, students with an IEP at Juarez, we had upwards of 15% of our student population. We have two wonderful case managers that uh, do a great job, as well as every student is provided with a service provider that keeps a closer tab on students, as well as the counselors are being involved. We have social workers that are being involved. So we, we really pride ourselves in taking care of each and every student, regardless if they have an IEP or not. But if they do have an IEP, we add those additional support. Very good question. Uh, and this is gonna be a, a shameless plug for my program that I'm in charge of. Uh, we do have a, a peer mentoring program uh, what that is, is uh, freshmen have the opportunity to be paired up with the upperclassmen, uh, meaning that um, you'll receive um, help from a, a student who has already been in your shoes recently. And pretty much this is a person you could turn to in case you have um, like any issues. I sometimes students, you know, they don't want to turn to adults. Oh, like you don't know what's going on. You don't know how it is. So actually us, the counselors, me and Miss um, Rico, which is another counselor, we train uh, these peer mentors. So they're highly trained and they know how to go through the, these situation. So um, that is one support that we provide for freshmen. Um, and I'll go on to the next question. Next question says, can you apply to the IB program and still participate in another program? For example, the health and medical program. I'm glad that we're getting that question so that we have an opportunity to clarify that. Um, when you apply, you can apply to more than one program. In fact, you can apply to all of the programs you heard about today. But remember that applying to high school programs means creating a list in the order you re in the order of which you want to get these programs, right? Eventually, you'll get an offer for just one program and you'll join a high school, you'll join our high school uh, in that program. And you can only be part of one academic program. So if you join our school in the IB program, then that's your academic program. If you join our school in one of the career programs, let's say the culinary arts program, then that's your academic program. So you can be in two different academic programs at the same time. However, even though you might be part of the IB program, you might also be interested in aspects of culinary arts, for example. So while you won't be taking classes during the day in the culinary arts program, you can join culinary club, for example. Remember clubs are after school experience, uh, opportunities that you have to join in with other students to share your interests. And, and, and that way you can learn, in the case of culinary, the basics of cooking and prepping meals and, and you can spend a lot of time in our kitchen. 
That's just one example of how you can participate in aspects of another academic program in the form of a club, an after-school activity. Yeah, we have a lot of partnerships uh, with various programs where uh, we're able to connect you. For example, if you join the IB program, uh, we do have a partnership with UIC where we're able to connect you with their Medicina program. So that's, that takes place um, on Saturdays and they have a long uh, summer program. So that's just one example of one program. There's other programs uh, that the counselors and Ms. Calderas know about that will easily, we give all the information towards you. And again, the possibilities are endless just because uh, we really try to get to know you and we definitely want you to grow outside of, of Juarez. So we try to connect you with all these programs. Absolutely, thank you, Jesse. Um, in addition to, um, I mean, we love having our students on campus, but we love partnerships like we have with Gallery 37, in which, for example, um, we, we've had students that are in our solar program, but also um, have the opportunity to leave um, campus in the middle of the day to go to their, to travel downtown to their culinary program. Um, and so there is definitely a way to double dip and to be really involved. Um, gosh, this is really making me miss our students on campus. It really is. But yeah, absolutely. There's so many different ways to be a part in many different things. We didn't even talk about robotics. Oh my gosh, there's robotics and ballet folklorico and mariachi and our, our theater program and our student voice committee. Actually, Mr. Ocon, before we move on to the next question, uh, can you tell us a little bit about our, our student leaders and, and groups like Student CBL? Yeah, also a, a great question. We have student leaders in every area of the campus, um, and these student leaders are really helping us uh, make changes to the school so that the school is really all about students. I mentioned in my message that our priority is the students. In order for us to make that possible, we include students like the Student Voice Committee, like the Student uh, CBE Group, like the Student Council. There are so many opportunities or the student mentors that Mr. Palencia mentioned. There are so many opportunities for students to get involved that um, will help make changes here to the campus, changes that are really beneficial to students. Um, this year, for example, one of the students helped me really change or rethink about, rethink our policy about cell phones. Um, and that was something that um, the students really decided to do because they didn't think that it was beneficial to students, uh, but rather that we should think about cell phones or technology as an educational tool. And so they brought um, powerful research uh, to the school, to me, and it really helped change the policy. Uh, and so students look at everything from policies like the cell phone to the food policy, to entrance procedures, and to everything that is about student life, making student life more exciting and, and more beneficial for the students. And so there's so many ways for students to get involved here. That's why when you become uh, an eagle here, um, we are going to be so excited to, to really hear your ideas about how we can make our school even better. Uh, we have a comentario en español, uh, Julieta Bolívar, que creo es uh, una madre. Uh, muchas felicidades por invitar a los padres que sea parte de la educación de sus hijos. Congratulations to the principal and the team. So just a quick comment. Um, we do have two questions. Uh, question comes from Oscar Salgado uh, says, what grades do you need uh, to average to stay on sports? I'll answer that. So for the most part in that CPS across uh, 2.5 GPA is, again, Mr. Marquez touched on that, but a 2.5 GPA is one of the, the lowest, the minimum GPA that you would need to participate in sports. Obviously we would encourage you to be above a 2.5 GPA. Um, but yeah, 2.5 is the minimum. Uh, next, question. I would also add, Mr. Palencia, that that our coaches do a great job of making sure that our students, uh, that our athletes are student athletes, uh, and so they really create study groups. They really create a community within the team, so that every athlete uh, is also focused on school 
and on competition and on athletics. That's, that is what really makes a student athlete. And that is what makes our sports program so different and unique and really uh, special to be a part of. Uh, next question is from Gloria Moncada. She asked, uh, can you talk more about game programming and website design? Can I take this one? Yes. <laughs> Oh, this is one of the academies that I love and I'm really, really proud of. Um, yeah, so when you apply um, to, uh, to that program, you apply to it as one. And then um, your freshman year, uh, when you meet with your, your counselors, and counselors, correct me if I make any errors in this, um, you decide whether or not you're going to go into um, game development or web development. So technically, while it's one program, we actually house both of them here at Juarez. So again, two separate game development and web development all fall under the IT umbrella for CTE, but are two separate programs and have two completely different curriculums that they follow. Um, one of them, of course, game development really focuses on language, coding, Python, Java, um, really developing your skills um, in these languages, and all while earning certification. So again, with all the academies, you start your sophomore year um, and, and you have um, job shadows and internships and um, partnerships that we have with um, corporations and, and community partners that really expose you to um, give you the opportunity to dive into these um, technical environments so that when you leave Juarez, you leave with certifications that are industry recognized um, and you're not going to college with no experience in um, web development or game development you already have your foot in the door. So you're not going to wait till you get your bachelor's degree to get your foot in the door into these technical environments. You're going to do that while you're in high school. Another question? Yeah, I'm going to uh, wait uh, because that was the end of the question. So I'm going to give like a minute uh, to see if more questions come in. I'll take an uh, opportunity here to ask another question of uh, Mr. Ocon. One of the things that we're really proud of here is how much our students just love to be on our campus. So much so that sometimes we have to tell them to go home. Um, so we often talk about Juarez as a center of community. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means to you? Yeah, also, also a great question. Um, I mentioned also earlier that, that Juarez is really a home to students. Um, and that means really something really powerful for us. Uh, it means that um, we, we work really hard at making sure that the entire campus really feels like home, especially uh, a home where students uh, are eager to come to and um, have no desire to leave. It's for that reason that um, our clubs don't end until late in the afternoon. The building uh, stays open until 8.30 uh, in the evening, Monday through Friday, and we open it on Saturdays as well, early in the morning all the way to the afternoon because there are so many activities here uh, that happen after school in the evening and on Saturdays. We also are a center of community because so many community agencies um, in Pilsen uh, and in the surrounding areas use Juarez, use our facilities to, to make sure that they bring uh, programming into Pilsen, into this community. And so we have amazing partnerships with community agencies like the Resurrection Project, like Pilsen Neighbors, like Alivio, 18th Street Development Corporation, Gats Hill, Club One, all the organizations that are uh, really important organizations here in Pilsen have programs here at Juarez. And for that reason, we keep the school open as late as possible. And we encourage students to stay here with us and use our facilities um, as late as possible, as long as their parents are aware. Um, 
because we want students to be here. And, so, and sometimes on Sundays as well. Um, that's true because we have a lot of activities um, that happened here on weekends as well. Juarez really is a, a center of community. That means it is a home for community organizations, for students, and for parents. Thank you. Uh, we did have one of our current students uh, comment, uh, Yuritsi Cardona, uh, just saying that uh, she's part of the ROTC program. Uh, and then those of you who are still listening, she did leave her email address. So if you have any questions, feel free. She is the CEO, which means the commanding officer uh, for the ROTC program. So uh, definitely uh, get perspective, you know, from, from her, you know, you could, we could like talk about the ROTC program, but it's best when you hear uh, from a student directly. And I know there was one student who had questions from the ROTC. So she's your perfect person to uh, get in contact with. Uh, we do have two more questions that just came in. Uh, first question is, do you have a plan if in the future students are allowed, allowed to go in person learning? So I think that's just questions if you know anything about um, the plan moving forward. So I think Mr. Ocon could take this question. And so we, we are definitely working with um, CPS leadership to make sure that when the mayor and when, and when CPS make the decision that um, students are ready to come back, we have several plans. The first is making sure that our campus is ready. Uh, you, you saw in the video, Ms. Roan mentioned uh, safety first. And so we are making sure that every part of this campus is ready to go, um, making sure that uh, there are sanitation uh, routines and practices, making sure that we have uh, protective gear, everything from masks to hand sanitizers. Um, most of that is already in place here on our campus. Um, and the, the floors, the walls already have all of the signs that will protect students and adults when they are on campus. And then we are looking at different hybrid models um, to make sure that our students and our adults are safe when they come in. But we are really eager and excited and looking forward to having students uh, on this campus. Um, even if it is the hybrid model, um, we, we welcome that. So we're eager to get those conversations going uh, in the hopes that it will bring back our students um, back home to Juarez. All right, uh, next question um, says, uh, does the IB program begin freshman year? Yeah, the IB program is uh, among the programs we talked about today is the one that starts from the, from the first year in high school. So. Uh, the IB experience at Juarez is uh, divided into two different programs. The first two years in high school, uh, IB calls it the middle years program. And it's a program that allows uh, students to get used to the to, to high school coursework. And it really best prepares you to continue in the IB experience in the last two years in high school. Uh, and that's called the diploma program, which is a highly rigorous program that best prepares you for college. So the first two years allows you to transition into high school and prepares you for the last two years. Uh, we have a couple more comments from uh, our ROTC cadets. Again, those of you who are tuning in, uh, you just read their comments and uh, send them an email, you know, if you want more perspective uh, from the ROTC program. Uh, another comment from my mom. Uh, como madre de familia, agradezco mucho que hay un lugar con actividades sanas para los estudiantes jóvenes. Se necesita lugares como Benito Juárez. Muchas gracias por su trabajo a todos. So I, again, uh, this just shows um, what the um, parent just commented, our commitment, you know, uh, having relationships with parents. Uh, I know from my perspective uh, as a counselor, uh, I am in constant communication with parents and we use various um, communication methods. Uh, we've communicated students uh, with, with parents um, via email uh, for those parents who have email and we also call home, so phone calls. And we also have a communication uh, program called Remind uh, where we're able to send text messages for those parents who are a little bit more tech savvy. Uh, I know um, I respond to text messages you know, all the time um, so I, so that's pretty, uh, pretty much a way 
that um, parents uh, could easily communicate with staff members and teachers alike. So we have about five more minutes before our program is set to end. Um, I want to take a little time to, 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 and any of you can jump in on this one, um, to just talk about um, our culture as a, as a whole in the school and what additional supports and programs are there for all students, students of, of color, students, uh, dreamers, um, uh, are, are, we are definitely proud to be an ally school. So especially with what we've experienced this year, um, what additional supports do we have or spaces or programs do we have that really just welcome, um, that demonstrate that we welcome all students um, from all um, backgrounds? Well, I, um, I will start with um, talking a little bit about uh, Bujabu. Um, it's, it is uh, just like um, the many clubs that we have here and organizations that we have on campus. Uh, Bujabu is uh, where students of color um, can come and or can participate in um, uh, traditional cultural celebrations that celebrate their specific cultural identity. We, we celebrate everything from Black History Month to Juneteenth um, to um, the amazing food in the culture, amazing traditions in the culture. It is where students can come in, uh, participate, and, and really feel welcomed. Um, we have tremendous leadership in that club run by students themselves with a teacher sponsor. Uh, but this is uh, a club where their voices can be heard, their perspectives really considered, and they also are able to, to help um, shape policy and make sure that we talk about the things that matter to them. In, in, the, same, um, in the same way uh, that Bujabu works, we also have um, an organization on campus called the Dreamers, and, and this organization uh, works with students who are undocumented and who need um, especially assistance uh, for college applications and scholarships um, and really just looking for a sense of belonging um, in, in a school community, especially in a city like Chicago where it's so tough to navigate given their experiences. And uh, clubs like Dreamers uh, and clubs like Bujabu and the many other uh, clubs that we have here really make students feel welcomed um, and make sure that they feel like they belong uh, and that they matter here at the school. Um, I also wanted to, to mention, uh, Ms. Cardenas, that uh, we do have a full comprehensive clinic here on campus. And it's, it's important to also mention um, because the clinic is not only a partnership with Alivio um, Medical uh, Clinic, but it's, but it's also a partnership that really brings to life um, the community that we have here in Pilsen. And so through this partnership, we have opened uh, a clinic here on campus. And during the day, they take care of our students and our staff. And in the afternoon, after school, they take care of community members. Uh, and so they can come in and get physicals, get vaccinations, uh, have appointments to take care of all of their medical and health needs. Um, and not many high schools in CPS have a full clinic right on their campus. And just to clarify, our, our clinic has its own separate entrance that uh, is not necessarily open um, to the school. So they don't have to come in, to, in through the school to get into the clinic. That's correct. Um, I'd also like to add that we are human and we know that sometimes we may miss the mark. And so we definitely invite student voice. So if there are any clubs or committees that you would like to see represented on our campus that um, really bring to life the things that you're most interested in, those are things that we would definitely um, implement as well. So we don't want anyone to think that we just have a set list of programs and options here at our school. We definitely 
value um, student voice and making sure that we're bringing to life all of the things that truly represent our student population. Um, I don't know if there's any uh, parents tuning in, uh, but um, I have a unique perspective where uh, I've been, I've seen Juarez uh, firsthand for the last 20 years, uh, first as a student, then uh, as a college career coach, teacher, and now counselor. Um, I could truly tell you that um, I was a student in the late 90s. So Juarez of the late 90s to Juarez right now uh, is not the same. And again, I could truly tell you firsthand, um, born and raised in Pilsen, um, again, there was, Pilsen was different than what it is now. Um, again, Juarez is now a community where students are truly supported. Um, I can, again, as a role as, uh, as a college career coach, teacher, and counselor, um, we generally um, take the time to get to know the students and if they're struggling, uh, definitely uh, get them to the finish line. You know, if we, even if it's like the post-secondary process, you know, we know that a lot of students are coming from um, first generation uh, households. So we definitely know that uh, support is needed and academically, um, we offer a lot of support. So um, definitely uh, Juarez of the past is not what Juarez is now and Juarez is the premier neighborhood school. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. I think I just want to um, end if we don't have any more questions, Jesse, on coming up on the feed. Uh, no, we're good. Okay, awesome. So I, I, I think I, I want to end by just making the statement that while there's only five, right, and while we're proud, right, we want more, um, there's five different CTE academies and an IB program that you can apply to to be part of the Juarez family, um, regardless of a, a personal interest that you may have in any specific program, all of those programs are geared towards developing your skills, your soft skills, your technical skills, and get you to the next level. These four years are really important, but these four years are about preparing you for life. And I think that I can uh, speak for everyone here and say that we take a lot of pride in, in that preparation. We, we, we put our hearts, I, I know everyone here on this call puts their heart and soul into the work that they do for our students. We put our students first. And if, if we can, uh, if you can walk away with one, one thought tonight is that our students and student voice is second to none. It's, it's one of the most important things here. Um, and I think if, if any of the students and uh, are on uh, current students are still on there, they, they can attest to that. Um, student voice is everything. And so with that, I wanna thank you for joining us and invite you to uh, visit our website and also take this opportunity to let you know that we are working on a new, fresh, updated website um, and it will be launching soon. So keep going to our website. Um, hopefully before the month is over, you see a brand new website that you can navigate and you can see for yourself everything that we're talking about. We're also really active on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now YouTube, so you will be able to see videos and messages and flyers, right? Flyers of things that are still happening. So even though we're in remote learning, none of this has stopped. And in, in one way, shape or form, our teachers, our students, our staff have figured out a way to keep this going and to ensure that we keep our students as engaged as possible and as connected to, them, to each other and to our school. So thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions um, that you think of later, send them to us uh, through Facebook Messenger, and we will gladly um, reply to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much, everyone. Have did a great want, night. Did you want to go to the next slide? Um, that way you could show our, our handle. Oh. Can you see it? Uh, no. No. It's, it's yeah. on that top. There you go. There you go. Sorry. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So our handle is uh, at uh, BJCA Eagles. Um, again, we're on 
Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Uh, and then our website is benitojuarez.net. Uh, again, check out the website. We constantly update it. Um, our fabulous webmaster, Mr. Marquez. Really we also at. have a digital brochure on there up now. Thank you, Mr. Marquez, for uploading that. So you can see for yourself um, more that we didn't get to touch on today. I mean, we could spend hours and hours talking to you about just the different programs, but in that brochure, it, it breaks down, um, it lists more of those clubs and organizations that Mr. Ocon was speaking about. And you'll also see some quotes from current students and parents just about um, their, their field or their, 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 